The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. What a blessing is to enter into the depths of the heart of Christ and also at the same time the depths of the heart of the church. The Gospel of St. John and Acts of the Apostles the heart of Christ and the heart of the church. And what is happening at this moment in the heart of the church with this man of Ethiopia? Imagine that in this world in the moment of Acts of the Apostles, 99.9% of the people couldn't read. And amongst the Jews, no one had in their own hands the, word, the written word of God, only the books of the prophets in the synagogues. And this man, has in his own hands the book of the prophet Isaiah, and he's reading. So it means that he's a man of highest intellectual, cultural, personal formation, and a man seeking God. And he has in his own hands probably a gift from the high priest in Jerusalem for the king of Ethiopia, for the queen of Ethiopia. Those words that weren't for him personally, no, they were for the people of Ethiopia that also had this belief in the word of the Lord. And at this moment, Philip arrives in his chariot. In his chariot, <laughs> not his carrot. And then he asks, what he's reading it, so he can understand it, and what transparency and what humility amongst all his capacities, all his honors, powers, possibilities, he can sincerely share from his heart. And the truth is that he says, I can't, un I don't understand it. No one explains what this means, this word means. What humility in the heart of this man. And he says that Philip, the deacon, preaches the word to him. It's the living word of Jesus, that Jesus is the one, that Jesus is the one who fulfilled the Isaiah prophecy and fulfilling Isaiah's prophecy in history, but in the life of this man, where he can also receive forgiveness of his sins. And he asks for baptism at this moment. The time of Passover is also a time of mystagogy. It's a moment when all of the church is celebrating the reception of the Easter sacraments, but those who have received the sacraments to renew 
our love, our gratitude, our our interior in relationship with the sacraments. Baptism. That in baptism we are forgiven from all of our sins. That grace begins to enter our soul. That we are temples of God. And this gift that we have received is so that we can receive the maximum gift, which is the Eucharist. And in the Eucharist, we contemplate the presence of Christ himself with us. Every time that we celebrate the Holy Mass, we are entering in the kingdom of our King. What humility each one of us, and I myself, have to have every time we enter the chapel, every time that we listen to the word of the Lord, that we should ask the Holy Spirit to help us to understand the word that he wants to communicate to all of us and to serve the sacred mysteries, the care for the t details of love so that we may offer an offering to the Lord in the liturgy and receive the Eucharist. Receiving the Eucharist has three primary effects. The first effect of the Eucharist is the forgiveness of sins. A fulfillment of the words of Isaiah, these are venial sins, but the Eucharist also communicates forgiveness of sins. The second grace is the maximum grace of sanctification of the human person that is all of our facti faculties, all of our beings to re is recreated every time we receive the Eucharist. And so receiving the Eucharist is the most sacred moment of our day in our lives. And every time that we receive the Lord, we want to renew this disposition of this man of Ethiopia with humility and simplicity and gratitude in receiving the Lord. And the third effect of the Eucharist is personal communion with Christ. Amongst all the pains and sufferings and so many difficulties, we have the most beautiful, most important consolation that Jesus in the Eucharist is with us and in us. And every time we will receive the Eucharist, we are receiving all the necessary graces for our path of holiness and to also fulfill our duties in this life of holiness. Because this is the w explicit will of God. So after completing our duties with love, responsibility, and simplicity, we are also we're also completing our witness to our love for the Eucharist. Let us listen to some words of our mother who founders about the Eucharist. The Eucharist is our Lord, re truly present in the Eucharist, his body, blood, soul, and divinity, hidden under the appearances of bread, but really and physical present in the consecrated host. He lives amongst us to sanctify us transform us in his image and to deliver us from sin from the devil and from the flesh to raise us up with his divine life resurrecting us from all death he is with us to calm the storms interior of our low passions so we open the blind eyes of our souls and to break the chains of oppression, habits, sinful habits, attachments to what's earthly, and elevate our souls, all of the human potentialities at the good of the heavenly ones. Today we have the greatest gift in life that we're going to encounter Jesus who fulfills the word of the Lord, and this word has become flesh in the Eucharist, which is the bread from heaven. 
receiving this bread, we receive life. We receive the strength to fulfill everything that the Lord wants for the good. All for the heart of Jesus through the heart of Mary. <laughs> 